Happy Easter, everyone. I hope you've had a lovely day. Why eat chocolate when you can eat, um, games? <laughs> there are some fantastic ones on sale. This is one of the best we've ever seen. And I think I have a nice little list that's going to potentially damage some of your backlogs. Congratulations to the winner of our free game. Your name's on screen. If you'd like to win a copy of a game, just leave your normal comments down below and we'll pick a winner out. Make sure you've got your notifications on, otherwise you may not see that reply. All right, what are the best games on sale this week? Welp, my name's Mark Walker. Welcome back to Switch Up. Now, let's find out. First up, and you can hear the glorious music in the background, it's my favorite game, or at least top three, Disco Elysium down 70% until April the 7th, taking it down to £10.79, and for once that sale is in all regions. Usually this one flip-flops across from the US side to the EU side, but it's one of the best top-down isometric adventure games I have ever played. It's all about the choices you make, the way that you talk to people, but it's an RPG in the sense that you assign points to your character and then your ability, or I should say affinity I guess, in each area affects your percentage chance of succeeding. This is what I would class as a masterpiece despite not being a perfect game. It's absolutely iconic in every way. Your main character starts out not being able to look himself in the mirror, literally, and you're trying to solve a murder. But the funny thing with Disco Elysium is it's not necessarily the main storyline that is the biggest hook. It's the character work they do with the person you play as. In fact, it's quite tragic. You discover things about his past, if you look into it, that will certainly, well, they certainly left an impact on me. And then the side cast just, yeah, what an incredible game. Disco Elysium down to, I think, matching its cheapest ever price. That's until April the 7th. An absolute banger of a title that I didn't expect when I reviewed it. It's Bomb Rush Cyberfunk down 35%. This takes obvious inspiration from Jet Set Radio, but man, did they nail it. Now, it's an interesting story in that you, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it too much, but you lose your head. Like, literally, your head gets cut off. <laughs> and then uh, your body gets a cybernetic head, which then goes looking for your head. Yeah. Now that I say it, it's interesting, it's absolutely mad, isn't it? But it's not just rollerblades, you've got skateboarding, there's BMXing in here, and you can switch between them. And they each control, obviously, completely differently, but there are different mechanics tied to those as well. There are boss fights where you still have to use those. And it has that old Tony Hawk's feel, where it encourages you to perform continuous runs to get massive score multipliers, and then you'll need that to unlock certain parts of levels. I was super impressed with this one, like really, really impressed when I wasn't expecting much at all. Now do go check out our full review if you want to find out everything before you make the purchase, but 35% off until April the 9th, yeah, decent. Now I told you there were going to be some bangers in this list, next up we've got Record of Lotus War. Now I have the physical edition of this right next to me. I think this is one I picked up, hmm, I was going to say on PlayAsia, I'm not sure actually, I think someone might have sent us this one. It comes from Playism, as in terms of publisher, and it was developed by Team Ladybug and WSS Playground. Now it's an action platformer where, if I remember rightly, you play as someone called Dealit. Is it Dealit? Was it Deedlet? Oh man, I'm getting old, I can't remember. No, it's Deedlet, I'm going with it. A bit of a cliche, really, starts out not knowing where they are, why, how they got there, and you've got to gradually figure that out. And it has these elemental spirits that you can swap in and out, which then changes your attributes. And in that regard, I guess it has some Metroidvania elements, but you can also level those spirits up, which is very cool. The only thing I'd say with this one is it won't take you that long to finish. I mean, I don't know if that's a positive or a negative, really. About eight hours, I'd say, and it also won't take up much space either. It's about 260 megs. The sale for that one goes on until April the 7th. It's 40% off down to 12.59. Now I'm quite sad that the um was it Riot Forge, the Song of Nunu, but developer Tequila Works made this one. And yeah, I, I think I think it's I'm quite sad. I say I'm quite sad. Quite sad about it because these League of Legends games, I think, are much better than they were given credit for. Song of Nunu was a lovely little 3D adventure featuring the two characters. And look, it didn't do anything hugely different to like your classic P PS2 adventure, but I did think they did a great job with the interactions between the two. Like one will pick the other up and hug them just randomly as you're moving about. There's loads of extra animations in there. And there's quite a cool puzzle mechanic as well. Some of the puzzles see you shift in environments around, but also 
you're using physics elements and then there are like the stages where you're racing and obviously those were filler stages back in the day weren't they and i was actually reviewing that terrible avatar game you know oh if you if you, if you haven't checked out my review of the avatar last airbender game that they just released or say just like a month ago absolute trash and that had similar stages in it where you're racing but they were just complete pony so yeah th this one is much better in that regard it actually feels like they put love and effort into it so that's why i'm sad that these games and this developer have kind of yeah they're not they're not making anymore are they um, i just don't think they sold very well so shame Anyway, it'll take about eight or nine hours. Like I say, it's not gonna set the world on fire, but if you're someone that likes old school adventure games, I think this one's worth it. Now that sale is only available in the American regions, but it is down to its cheapest ever price. $17.99 or your regional equivalent, regional. I definitely said regional there, didn't I? Was that regional? Wow, <laughs> I'm leaving that in. That sale goes on until April the 9th. Absolute barjan. One that probably doesn't need much introduction is Two Point Hospital, but this is the Jumbo Edition, which you would hope would be pretty large. Jumbo, like a Savaloy. Now it's 85% off, it includes all of the DLC, and it's down to the obscenely low price of £5.24. Are you having a laugh? That's crazy. Now, if you're not sure what this is, it actually was developed by some of the people that created the original Theme Hospital and many others, which is a game where you essentially run a hospital. <laughs> Two Point Hospital does exactly the same thing, even down to some of the audio work being very similar. People come in with strange conditions, you build up an amazing hospital, hopefully, try and make it as efficient as possible, hire different staff members, in the hope of eventually moving on to bigger and better ones and completing a large campaign. Now, like I say, this edition comes with a ton of new content. It's also had a load of patchwork since it first came out, and it's just a complete steal at that price. It really is. That's just uh, it's an essential pickup, I would say. And it's also available in all regions, and that sale goes on until April the 7th. Happy days. Now we're moving towards my ancient history and my... Uh, well, well, actually, I didn't know that this trilogy was originally on, like, was it SNES or was it NES? One of the two, because Glenn's always uh, mentioned it. But it's Shadowrun Trilogy, which I didn't play on those. I played this version, and then, weirdly enough, I think I played them on mobile. But they are 75% off. These are isometric adventures, again, in that classic style. When it launched on Switch, it did have some real bugs and issues. And I was speaking to the developers, and a big patch came out to fix most of those. Still, you might find the occasional one, but you're getting three large games with great storylines you creating a character choosing the path they go down you've got ranged up close turn-based combat but this is a steal at this price because they actually put all three games together drop the price 25% because obviously it's a multi-pack happy days but now at the moment it's 75% off so if you're in the regions that this is applicable to as you'll see down in the prices there definitely grab this a real a, a real nice collection a little slower paced at the start sean a few jankier lines of dialogue but if you like things like blade runner and your Baldur's gate it's like a, a mishmash of the two of those the sale for that like many of these others goes until april the 7th now mortal shell is also down i believe to its lowest ever price the good thing about this one is it did get a few patches and it actually more recently had a patch let's be honest the visuals still don't look <laughs> um that nice but it's all about that gameplay this has two different modes on the one hand you've got your more traditional souls like but it has a cool mechanic whereby when you die you get ripped out of your wait for it mortal shell and then if you can get back to your body then you can carry on the fight i thought that was really cool the thing that hooked me though was the uh there's essentially a roguelite mode and it's like different each run has like a mix-up of the different bosses so you might fight face one that you'd only see much later in the game and it also lets you use the different mortal shells because there are a number of different ones like one's very good at slow heavy attacks one's much faster and yeah has that addictive quality a bit like another game we're going to talk about in a minute now the sale on that one as i say 85 5% off. Ridiculous. And that's until April the 7th. The Falconeer Warrior Edition, or Warrior Edition, however you say it, is 75% off until April the 7th. If you're a fan of supporting indie developers, now this is the one. It comes from a guy called Thomas Sala, and you've never seen someone or an indie de developer more passionate about their work. He's all over Twitter, constantly doing updates. You know, he works his absolute butt off, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours to get his games out. He's just released a new one on, uh, on Steam, actually. I think it's called Bulwark. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, 
but it uses a lot of the assets from the Falconeer. And the Falconeer essentially, as the title suggests, has you pilot this huge falcon. But I love the art style. It almost looks like a diorama of this water kingdom with these islands on it. There are different missions that you carry out and you can really see the passion for potentially some of the, you know, the older N64 style Star Fox games and things like that. Lilac Wars. But there are rival factions and you can actually upgrade that Falcon and unlock different ones. Really a cool concept, nice idea, but 75% off. That's the cheapest it's ever been and I, I want to support Thomas. He clearly loves games, loves what he does, absolutely hates AI. <laughs> like honestly, this guy doesn't like that. Um, and fair play to him, you know, he's doing he's doing what he loves and he wants to make sure he can keep doing it. The sale on that one goes on until April the 7th. Then the US regions, you have a cracking sale on Remnant from the Ashes. This was a game that I played entirely in co-op with Glenn and Asdin from Grinning Wolf Games. And it was flawless, like absolutely flawless in terms of performance, connection. We didn't have any issues at all. Now, look, I want to say that when I say flawless, I am talking predominantly about its online connectivity. In-game performance is actually very good as well, and it has very good use of dynamic resolution scaling generally looks quite nice. What was interesting about this is that it's a, I believe the second game? There was the Kronos before the Ashes which was kind of medieval but then it still had that futuristic element. This one's much more of a shooter so it feels a bit Gears of War in its shooting mechanics but then you can still melee up close and personal with those enemies and also the, um, the, the, the game itself actually reshuffles certain areas while still keeping the main story arcs and the same and well actually not necessarily the same bosses because we fought one boss and then we found out that you know we spent like four hours on it and we didn't even need to fight it. So yeah, there's an, there's an element of like randomization in it, which is actually done well. And you know what I mean when I say that? Sometimes you get these random games where it's just shuffling levels and it's just, yeah, not fun. But, but here it's done nice and feels coherent and like it was intentional, which is a sign of good gameplay design. Now you've got a hub area where you can upgrade your character, buy new weapons, really very good game in co-op, but also good in single player. So as I say, if you're in the US regions, a nice little shooter souls-like hybrid and that sale goes on until April the 7th. Now I wanted to put in, rather than a hidden gem, I wanted to have an addictive game because I have my addictive game series where we cover games that you just can't put down. And in fact, I know that Glenn's just finished one of his most addictive games ever. It's something to do with surviving and uh, something to do with vampires. You might guess what it is. But we've got Wild Frost here, which has an EU sale down 15%. I love this. This was basically two developer friends who were like, hey, why don't we make a game together? And my goodness, is that art not the most glorious thing? You could eat it, couldn't you? It's like a sweet shop in a game. It's just lovely. Now, this is a deck building roguelite. Yes, you've heard it so many times before, but it's done brilliantly here. You've got different factions that you choose and you choose a leader of a faction and then you go out on a run and it has very cool mechanics. Things like if you hit an enemy with snow, then it will stop them from taking a turn for a set number of times. And also the, the position that you place your units, because that's how it works, they're almost like troops placed out on a battlefield. You can use different ones to block damage from others. There are bosses in there and, and there's a, such a cool mechanic where when you reach the end, if you defeat the very last guy, then that group that you defeated the last boss with becomes the boss so that your next run you're fighting against that lot. And obviously by its very nature that means it's going to be harder because you were better than the boss that was there before, if that makes sense. It just works out really well and we had a lot of feedback on this one, you know, there were certain balancing issues and other things and I know there have been so many updates for this, so I can only imagine it's more refined and more tweaked and it was already a good game anyway. So yeah, if you if you want a little gem, that is such a good one, but be warned, very addictive. Then we have our Savaloy selection, and I actually met a South African guy today, very nice chap, we had a Easter lunch with him, and I said, oh, I'm always mentioning Fet Cooks, and his eyes lit up. Now, <laughs> now Fet Cook is like a South African, um, I don't even know, it's like a snack, is it? He said it was better than a burger. And then he, he talked to me about Fet Cooks for the next like 10 minutes with wonder in his eyes. And I've never even tried one, so yeah. Anyway, they're games that are very, very cheap, but very good. First up, you've got Limbo. What a cracking game. Side scroller, you all know it has that black and white art style. 90% off until April the 19th. Then you've got Glyph. 
I first saw this on Nintendo Life, a lovely little adventure game where you're controlling this like ball, has physics based elements to it, puzzles on each stage, 90% off as well until April the 25th. Inertial Drift, which I think is a very underrated racer, has an arcade feel, obviously by the title you have to drift around corners, and again uh, an indie developer that I think did a, a really nice job and it has that lovely 80s colour palette. That one's on sale until April the 9th. Neo Cab, something completely different, an adventure game where you're a cab driver and there's a storyline that gradually unfolds that's 85% off until April the 9th and then finally at the moment I'm watching that what's it called The Walking Dead the ones who oh I don't know the ones who missed out on the last episodes of the series I know The Walking Dead the ones who live or something like that I can't remember I'm watching that at the moment and it's surprisingly okay like I'm like wow this is actually decent a bit like Shogun if you haven't caught Shogun on Disney Plus that's like oh my goodness I'm loving that TV up <laughs> new channel but anyway the walking dead games are all on sale at the moment so if you've never played the telltale classics grab them 75 percent off those sales go on until april the 9th now some of the music in this episode was from an artist named retrovex and he has basically messaged us and said hey do you want to use some of my music and i was like yes i do i really enjoy it it's kind of like cyber cyberpunk style a bit blade runner-esque so yeah, I'll pop links to his stuff down in the uh, comments. No, I won't. I'll pop it in the description because popping it in the comments would be weird. Thanks so much to all of you that enjoy these Sunday sales. Happy Easter. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!